Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. I welcome every one of you to the Bible study tonight in Jesus' name. I pray it will be an enriching time together as we look at the word of God and study together. Would you rise up as we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you very much for bringing us together. Thank you for the faithfulness of your people. Always coming, always listening, always learning. And Lord, we pray that what we listen to and learn today will be of tremendous benefit to everyone in Jesus' name. We know the Lord is coming again. And we pray, Lord, you prepare every one of us to be ready. That none of us will be left behind in Jesus' name. We know that those who are left behind will go through a terrible time of the great tribulation of that reign of the Antichrist. What a weeping and what a suffering that will be for them, Lord. None of us will be there at that time in Jesus' name. Open our eyes to see what we need to see. And move our hearts to take the right decision. So that we we'll live for the glory of your name. And when that time comes, the Lord will appear in the sky to call his own people home. Lord, when the saints go marching in, we'll be part of them. Bless everyone here tonight. And all our brothers and sisters who are listening everywhere as they fellowship with us around the study of the word. Bless them together with us in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. You can do better than that. Thank you very much. You can see now. We're looking at Daniel tonight. We've been in Daniel now for a number of months and the Lord has been enriching our lives. Tonight we're looking at Daniel chapter 11 and we're going to study from verse 21 to verse 45. What a passage this is. I'm going to read some selected verses of scripture as we look at this together. Verse 21. And in his estate shall stand up a vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom. But he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. That already tells you something. Number one, this is prophetic. Because he chooses the future tense in his estate. Shall stand up a vile person. And then he talks about his receiving the kingdom. And then it says he'll receive that kingdom. It will not be given to him. But he'll come in peaceably. And he'll obtain that kingdom by flattery. Look at verse 23. And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully. Again, as you see the word shall. That's referring to the future. He shall work not faithfully, not truthfully, not honestly, but deceitfully. For he shall come up and he shall become strong with a small people. Again, this is predicting that this king that will come, when he comes, is going to manifest a kind of unprecedented power. He'll appear small at the beginning, but then as he grows, he's going to be really mighty and strong. In verse 24, and he shall enter peaceably even unto the fattest places of the province, and he shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. Instead in us, he's going to prevail so much and he's going to have so great power that even the military geniuses before him, like his forefathers, they wouldn't have got such a victory. And then it says, he shall scatter among them the prey and the spoil and the riches, yea, and he shall forecast, he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds, even for a time that tells us that latter part even for a time that means that his reign will not be forever and his ruling will not be everlasting it's just for an appointed time a period of time even for a time we're looking at verse 31 in verse 31 it says and their arms shall stand on his part and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength it all comes to, to his uh, religious persuasion 
and to the perversion of his heart. It says he will pollute the sanctuary that when he comes eventually he will even defile and destroy the worship of the living God and he shall take away the daily sacrifice. And the thing is getting worse and worse because first of all he defiles, he desolates that place and they are not able to worship again. He even cancels the daily sacrifice of the Jewish people and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. The first part of verse 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. As we have read, as we have read all these verses, you see the mode of oppression of this vile person and this Satan control personality that will come. Look at verse 36. And the king shall do according to his will and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god and shall speak marvelous things, wonderful things, terrible things, blasphemous things against the God of gods and shall prosper. That he is will prevail at that time till the indignation be accomplished. For that that is determined shall be done. And then in verse 37 it says, Neither shall he regard the gorge of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any god, for he shall magnify himself above all. You begin to have a feel of this personality coming, this prince coming, this king coming. That is the Antichrist actually. He will not regard the Almighty God because he will stand in the temple of God making himself and arrogating such authority unto himself. Because of that, there will be no respect in his heart for any God. Verse 41. He shall enter also into the glorious land that he shall enter into the land of Israel. The people of God will have a feel of the power, the pressure, and a terrible force that he'll bring upon them. And many countries shall be overthrown. That tells us then that the rule of the Antichrist, this vile person, this son of perdition, this one that is coming, his rule will not be limited to the children of Israel, to the land of Israel, because it says many countries shall be overthrown, but these shall escape out of his son, even Edom and Moab, and the chief of the children of Ammon. We're looking at verse 45. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas in the glorious holy mountain. Here comes the end, yet he shall come to his end. That Antichrist will come to his end. It will not be forever because the king of kings shall come. And the Lord of Lords will appear. And when he appears, he's going to destroy the power of that vile person. It says, yet he shall come to his saying, and none shall help him. As we look at Daniel, we're coming to the end of the book of Daniel. And for us to just, just look back to the things we have learned and see how special, how peculiar, how precious both to the people of the Old Testament and the people of the New Testament, Daniel was. Look at the prophetic inspired words of Daniel. Daniel's inspired writing did not only record history, it also revealed prophecy. And the revelation of prophecy through Daniel was not limited to Israel. The great events concerning the major gentile kings and kingdoms were revealed in great and minute details. Already we studied in chapter 2, he spoke about Babylon, he spoke about Middle Persia, he spoke about the Grecians, he spoke about the Romans. And so you understand that his ministry extended towards the Israelites on the one hand and also towards the gentile kingdoms on the other hand. Some of the prophets in the Bible days, their predictions and prophecies were fulfilled only a few years after their ministry. Or maybe some of them only a few decades after their ministry and lifetime. Some of them only a few centuries, hundreds of years after their ministry and lifetime. In the case of Daniel, it's very different. 
his prophecy spans a very long period from the time when he prophesied in Babylon until the end of time, until the end of the world. And if you examine the prophecies of Daniel, some of those prophecies were fulfilled immediately. Like when he prophesied that that very night, Belshazzar will be slain. That prophecy became fulfilled within one day, within one night. In some other cases, you'll find that his prophecy was fulfilled about a few months, 12 months actually about one year after he prophesied you remember when he prophesied that Nebuchadnezzar was going to be turned to an animal and it was going to eat grass like an animal that was fulfilled 12 months after, yet some others were fulfilled hundreds of years after, because he spoke about the coming of the Middle Persian Empire, that took some years, and then the Grecian Empire, that took some years, and the Roman Empire, that took some hundreds of years before they came and then he spoke about christ being born about the messiah and then that messiah will come and the messiah shall be cut off that actually happened some hundreds of years after he spoke about christ coming the first time and he spoke about christ coming again the second time has christ come the second time no, he has not come the second time. And so, part of that prophecy of Daniel then, which is referring to the time he will still come in the future, that is still to be fulfilled. He spoke about the Antichrist. And he spoke about the covenant he will have the children of Israel. He spoke about the abomination of desolation that he will erect, he will affirm in the land of Israel. At that time, that has not been fulfilled yet. That is still to come. In fact, as we look at the prophecies of Daniel, he goes right on to the very end of time. Look at Daniel chapter 11. In Daniel chapter 11 verse 35 And some of them of understanding shall fall To try them and to purge and to make them white Even to the time of the end To the time of the end Because it is yet for a time appointed Do you see how significant the prophecy of Daniel was? He prophesied and his ministry actually spanned the whole of the period of that time till the time of the very end. Let's look at Daniel chapter 12. In Daniel chapter 12, we're looking at verse 4. But oh, thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. You see that again, that Daniel knew he was prophesying, not only to the people of his own time, he was prophesying also for the people of the time still to come. Verse 7, and I heard the man closed in the inn, which was upon the waters of the river when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven and swear by him that liveth forever and ever that it shall be for a time and time son and half three and a half years of the great tribulation so and that is still future and you see then that he prophesied about things yet to come look at verse 9 and he said Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. That means then Daniel was very significant, significant among all the prophets of the Old Testament. In fact, even among the prophets of the New Testament too. Daniel's ministry is relevant to Israel. And his ministry is relevant to all the nations of the world. Important and instructive at his own time and also at our own time. As we study this, I don't want you to just get a theory of what we're studying and say, what a wonderful man. Daniel was think about yourself and think about our church as well. We just, we have just learned that the ministry of Daniel was profitable, was important, was very instructive to the people of Israel and to the people that were not Israelites. You think about your life. Is your life profitable to people around you and the people beyond you? 
It's your life serviceable to the people around you. The people that look like you. And the people that are not looking like you. They don't talk the way you talk. They don't speak the language you speak. They don't dress the way you dress. They are people outside your territory. Outside your community. Are you useful unto them? In the case of Daniel, his ministry was profitable to the Jews and to the Gentiles. Enlightening, encouraging, and strengthening to the early church and to the end time church to the young and to the old to the people that began the race and to the people that are now ending the race and our prayer is that our lives and ministries will touch other people will transform other people will teach other people beyond our locality beyond the period of our lifetime if that is going to be so it will mean that you'll be looking beyond yourself You'll be looking beyond your locality. Think about us as individuals. Think about us as a family, your own family. Is your family touching other people beyond your local circle, beyond your comfort zone, beyond the people, members of the church around you, beyond your house fellowship? Are you touching people that reach farther and farther away from you? And think about our church, Deeper Life Bible Church. Are we willing? Are we ready? Are we prepared? Are we going to pay the price to be able to reach beyond our local church, our district church, our church in the groups, our church in the city? Or are we just satisfied with ourselves? Daniel wasn't. Daniel's ministry reached across to people beyond him. Are we willing to reach our immediate neighborhood all around us? That's what Jesus said. He shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both where again Jerusalem and then where Judea and then where Samaria and now tell me the rest until the uttermost part of the earth Wait a minute. What does that mean? It means that uh, many times we need to release our leaders, our region overseers, our state overseers, our uh, local pastors, our district coordinators, our group coordinators to go beyond, to reach the uttermost part of the earth. But you know, if we always complain, the coordinator is not there again. The group coordinator is not there again. The region of us is not there again. Our state of us here, national of us is not there again. Where is he gone again? Don't you remember that Daniel was not just ministering to people nearby. Daniel was to reach forth and reach out to the people beyond him. Now again, are we reaching beyond our local church? Are we reaching beyond our denomination? Deeper life is almost becoming like a denomination. And that means that people know us, they identify us and they know that the churches are there of deeper life all over this nation all over this continent of Africa and beyond Africa but you know what happens to denominations they settle down and they think about people like themselves, the people that believe the same doctrine, the people that stand in the same place, the people that drink the same kind of water and the people that eat the same kind of food and the people that dress the same way and the people that make their kind of appearance the same way, they get kind of bottled up and they narrow down and they say you are not like me, I'm not going to talk to you. You are not like me, I'm not going to minister to you. You are not like me, I'm not going to plan anything for you. That wasn't like Daniel. That Daniel planned and reached out to people beyond him. How I pray that this church, Deeper Life Bible Church, will not settle down like other denominations. That this great expanding and launching ministry of Daniel, the Lord will give to us as a church in Jesus' name. By the way, that's the reason why we thank God for the transmission. We thank God for the internet. That's why transmission and internet were reaching beyond just deeper life. There are some other churches, some other denominations, some other localities, hospitals, some prisons, and um, students uh, gatherings together that are not related to deeper life in name. But we're all studying the word of God together. This is the will of God. It will continue like this in Jesus' name. And then sometimes we have to pay the price. We have to spend some amount of money so that we're reaching out to people beyond ourselves. This good thing has started. I pray it will continue. Then we're going to support the leadership of the church so that by the grace of God, we're going to touch, teach, and transform every life around us and beyond us as well. I thank, him. thank God for your amen. 
We're going to divide the study tonight to three parts. Number one, the politics of the self-willed king. He has a kind of politics. And you see the kind of politics he played by flattery, by deception, by lying, by falsehood, by hypocrisy. Number two, the profanity of the self-centered king. The profanity of the self-centered king. Number three, the perdition. The peril, the destruction of that Satan-controlled king. Let's come back to number one, Daniel chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 21. Daniel 11 verse 21. And in his estate shall stand up a vile person, to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. Here we're learning something about the coming uh, king. Well, as you look at Daniel, you, you must understand that this passage we're studying has a double fulfillment. Number one, there was a near future. Number two, there was a far future. As Daniel was looking at this, was looking at that in future, it's like you have two mountains before you. There's one standing near. There's another one standing afar off. And when you look at those two mountains from afar, it, it appears that they are top, they are peaks. They almost match together. And yet there is a gulf, a wide space between those two mountains. The first mountain will be the near future. And the second mountain will be the far future. And so as we read this, it has a kind of double interpretation and double application. Number one, it was applicable to Antiochus Epiphanes. And he was the fulfillment in the near future. A few years, a few hundreds of years, after Daniel prophesied, this vile person Antiochus appeared. And then he did many of these things that Daniel had prophesied. But it's a far, far future at the time of the Antichrist, when the Antichrist will come. And it will be the final future fulfillment of this that we're reading. Let's go on now from verse 22. And with the arms of a flood shall they be overflown from before him, and shall be broken. Ye also the prince of the covenant, and after the league made with him, he shall walk deceitfully. He'll come in a deceitful way with flatteries, and then when he comes like that, he will try to turn the minds of the people, and he'll say, the man is so peaceful, the man is so gentle. Could this be the prince of peace we're waiting for? Could this be the person that will bring peace between Israel and the Middle East? Could be, this be the person, this great, great politician? Because his politics, he'll start with the politics of peace. He'll say, why are we fighting one another? We're not going to fight anymore. And then he'll appeal to the Israelites, appeal to the Arab nations, appeal to Europe, appeal to all the rest of the world, Africa, Asia, America, everywhere. Let's all come together. And when he does that, the people will think, this is a wonderful person. This is a great personality. He wants us to put down our swords, and then all the people agree with him. Verse 23, after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully for he shall come up and he shall become strong with a small people. In verse 24, he shall enter peaceably even upon the fasted places of the province. And he shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. That is his fathers that came before him. All these other politicians, all these other kings, all these other presidents, trying to bring the nations together. And we have the United Nations already now, and they have been trying for how many years now? now, and they have not been able to bring peace everywhere in the world. But this other one will come, and for a short period, what the UN was not able to do, and what all the other people were not able to do, they just bring them together. And the people will say, this is fantastic. This is glorious. We've never seen anything like this before. I pray you'll not be here at that time. But those people, they'll wait and see. They'll just find that everything will turn around, very suddenly, verse 24, and he shall do that which his father's fathers have not done. And then it says, and he shall scatter among them the prey and spoil and riches, yea, and he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds, and even for a time, verse 25, and he shall stir up his power and his courage in his courage against the king of the south with a great army. And the king of the 
south shall, st shall be stirred up to battle with a very great and mighty army, but it shall be great and mighty, but he shall forecast the devices against him. Yea, they that feed of the portion of his meat, that is, those who are, he invited them, I'll feed you, I'll take care of you. And there'll be some plans uh, that you'll think is just philanthropic and it's, it's so generous and it's helping all these other people. And he's saying that, you know, when he brings all those uh, things, uh, you know, he's giving money here, he's giving donation there, and he's giving, he has a food, a food distribution plan and he's giving food to these other people and to all these ones. People will say, well, we're about arrive. What else are we looking for? And even if that Christ will come, if, if this one is not the Christ, if that Christ will come, will he be able to do more than this one is doing? But he'll do that to draw them near so that he can destroy them. So that he'll be able to fight against them with great might and great power. That's why it says they that feed upon on, of the portion of his meat shall destroy him. And his army shall overflow and many shall fall down slain. And both these kings' hearts shall be to do mischief. And they shall speak lies at one table. They'll be deceiving and deceiving one another. They'll be speaking lies to one another at the same table. That is, they'll have conference together. They'll say, let's make this firm. And let us set up a treaty. And let us write a communique. And let us do something so that this agreement we're having now, it will never change. And then they'll be telling lies to one another. But it shall not prosper, for yet the end shall be at the time appointed. Then shall he return into his land with great riches, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant. And he shall do exploits and return to his own land. At the time appointed, he shall return and come toward the south, but it shall not be as the former or as the latter. We're talking about uh, this personality yet to come. I just told you that this personality, he had a fulfillment in uh, Antiochus Epiphanes, but he's going to have a final future fulfillment in the Antichrist. But as we study this, I don't want you to throw everything just into the future. I don't want to, you to throw everything all to the Antichrist and Antiochus Epiphany. Do you know that sometimes it can happen like that too around us? In fact, let me show you the story of David. We're looking at Second Samuel, Second Samuel chapter 15. In Second Samuel chapter 15, you're going to see uh, something like this. This is like a shadow. This is like something that happened even before the time of this prophecy that is very, very similar to what is going to happen which is teaching us that we ourselves we should be on our guard. That there may be people that will come like this. They come with flattery and they come with deceptive politics. And it's, uh, it appears these are the final buster. And this is what I'm going to set you on. Because, you know, this man is so great and this individual is so wonderful. And he's going to provide this and this and that. If they don't have Christ, don't trust them. If they are not righteous, you can't trust them. If they don't believe the doctrines of the Bible, you cannot trust them. And if they are not standing for righteousness, righteous and faithful to the Lord and faithful to the body of Christ, you cannot trust people like that. Second Samuel, we're looking at chapter 15, verse 6. In Second Samuel chapter 15, I'm reading there from verse uh, 6. Look at what it says. It tells us, and on this manner did Absalom to all Israel that came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stood told the hearts of the men of Israel by flattery, by deception, by peaceful kind of approach, the way he approached all those Israelites that came to the king. And have you noticed how their names start? Absalom, Antiochus, Antichrist, they all start with that A. And when you see people like that, and if, if you're not prayerful, and if you're not getting any message from the Lord, and you just fall for that for the rest of your life, and then you get into deception, I pray God will preserve your life in Jesus' name. And it came to pass after 40 years that Absalom said unto the king, I pray thee, let me go and pay my vow, which I have vowed unto the Lord in Hebron. He even became religious, and he said, I have a vow to 
pay. And I want to go and pay that vow. And I was telling David to give him chance to go and do that. For thy servant vowed a vow while I abode at Geshem in Syria. Saying, if the Lord shall bring me again indeed to Jerusalem, then I will serve the Lord. And the king said unto him, what? Go in peace. What else can you tell this man that looks so gentle and so meek and so peaceful and is saying, I had a vow, I'm going to worship the Lord. My daddy, the David, you are worshiping the Lord. I've made a vow to you. I'm going to worship the Lord like you think about that kind of deception. And he arose and went to Hebron. But Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel saying, as soon as ye hear the sound of the trumpet, then ye shall say, Absalom reigneth in Hebron, and with Absalom went how many? 200 men out of Jerusalem that were called, and they went how? In their simplicity, and they knew not anything. That's the deception. And when the Antichrist will come, that's exactly what will be repeated again. They will just follow that Antichrist, not knowing anything, not knowing the deception, the flattery, and not knowing that all this is to destroy them. But you know, what happened at the time of Absalom, many people lost their lives because they went in their simplicity and they fell for that deception. They lost their lives. That's the reason why the Lord is warning us and teaching us all this. And you don't just throw it into the time of Daniel and to the time of Antiochus Epiphanes. You're not throwing everything we're studying to the time of the Antichrist to come. You're making some application of this to your life today. That if you fall for a deceptive person, if you fall for a person that looks uh, appears to be peaceful but yet is a bear, is a devil at heart, that you're going to destroy your life and you're going to destroy many, many people. Let's look at Second Samuel chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 6. Second Samuel chapter 18 verse 6. So the people went out into the field against Israel and the battle was in the wood of Ephraim where the people of Israel were slain before the servants of David and there was what? A great slaughter that day of 20,000 men for the battle was there scattered over the face of all the country and the wood devoured more people that did and the sword devoured. And that's why they were studying all this that, well, it's, it happened already in time of Antiochus Epiphany because Epiphany, Antiochus Epiphany already lived some 170, 171 years, 160 years before Christ. And then the Antichrist is still coming, but even now the false prophets and the false people, they're still acting like that coming antichrist and that's what the lord is telling us that that day is still coming when people are going to be acting like this and you want to be very prayerful very vigilant and depending upon the spirit of god so they will not deceive you you will not be deceived in jesus name we're looking at psalm 55 verse 21 psalm 55 verse 21 the words of his mouth were smoother than butter but war was in his heart. That's talking about it. We can apply that to Absalom. We can apply, apply that to Antiochus Epiphany. We can apply that to the Antichrist. And we can apply that to the people that have the spirit of the Antichrist. The words of his mouth, they were smoother than honey, than, than butter. But war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. And when that Antichrist will eventually come, see what the Bible says in First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5, we're reading from verse 1. First Thessalonians chapter 5, we're reading from verse 1. But of the time and the seasons, brethren, Ye have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night, for when they shall say peace and safety. When that vile personality will arise, when that terrible king shall arise, when that antichrist will eventually come and he brings the peace and the flattery and the deception and he's looking so gentle and sheepish like a lamb and yet he's a lion, a devouring lion, they will think there is peace and safety, then sudden destruction. 
cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Look at Second Thessalonians chapter two. Second Thessalonians chapter two, reading from verse nine, talking about the Antichrist, even him whose coming is after the walking of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. People will not look at that word lying, lying wonders. You know what they'll look at? All they'll see is they'll see power, they'll see signs, they'll see wonders. All they'll see is they'll see miracle. And because that's what they're looking for, miracle of provision, miracle of abundant supply, miracle of peaceful coexistence, miracle of war, no war at this particular time. That's at the beginning of the great tribulation. And they will say, this is wonderful. Signs and wonders and power. But the line wonders. Then it says in verse 10, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. You know what can preserve us from such a people that deceive when we have the love of the truth. When we say, Lord, the number one sin in my life, the number one sin in my desire, the number one sin in my aspiration, the number one sin in my goal, my dream, in the number one sin in my accomplishment, achievement will be the love for the truth. You know, if you are like that and you exalt truth above any other need in your life, above the needs of your flesh. You exalt truth above pleasure. You exalt truth above riches. You exalt truth above prosperity. And you exalt truth above just superficial peace. You say, well, I want to be peaceful, but truth is above that. I want to have pleasure and satisfaction, but truth is above that. I want to have riches, if riches are available, but, but truth is above that. I want to have a good relationship, interaction with people, but truth is above that. That is the only thing that can save us and preserve us. But if you put the truth to the background and say, well, doctrine divides. Doctrine is going to bring problems. And so let's forget all about doctrine now. Let's forget about the truth now. And let's just have prosperity. And let us have partnership. And let us have coexistence together. And let us have success. And let us have climbing the mountain. Let us be the head. Let's forget about doctrine. Let's forget about the truth. You are going to be deceived. But when you put the truth in the front and say, my priority is the truth. If somebody loves the truth and he wants the truth, yes, I'm for him. And he is for me. And we are together. But once the truth is not there, then we say, no, we cannot go along together. Look at that again in verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. I pray you will not have delusion. So that they should believe a lie. You will not believe a lie. I said you will not believe a lie. You know, if you love the truth, the spirit of truth will always abide with you. And anytime error is coming, anytime deception is coming, the spirit of truth will set the alarm in your heart and say, No, no, that there's error there. There is error that is hidden behind that flattery. Underneath that a kind of deceptive policy, there is error there. The spirit of truth will alert you, and you're not going to error in Jesus' name. And it says that they all might be damned to be. Believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But all this that was studying, they're still in the future, in their final future fulfillment. Look at Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk chapter 2. And we're reading there from verse 3. The Lord is telling us there's an appointed time. An appointed time when this will still be fulfilled in the future. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come and will not tarry. As we look at this a picture of the Antichrist to come, already we have seen that uh, Antiochus was like a preview of this Antichrist to come. And what do we see about him from what we have read, summarizing everything, a vile person. 
to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he'll rise to power and he will obtain that kingdom by flatteries. He, he, he raised up a mighty army described as the arms of a flood. And then we're told the character of Antiochus is fully described by Daniel, the prophet. Already that has gone into history. And those of us who have read history, we have known that that's exactly what happened at the time of the Maccabees. Now it says, he shall be a vile person, verse 21, and he shall come peaceably, still, verse 21, and obtain the kingdom by flatteries, verse 21, and he shall walk deceitfully, that's verse 23, he shall enter peaceably, and he shall do that which his fathers have not done, we have read that in verse 24, he shall do mischief and speak lies, verse 27, he will be deceiving and he will be deceived, they will be speaking lies at the same table, Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 13, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant, verse 28, under the guise of friendship, under the guise of fellowship, under the guise of being a peaceful person, and Teochus plundered the riches of the richest lands and persecuted the Jews severely. And the Antichrist is coming, he is going to do the same thing, even beyond what Antiochus did. Point number two, the profanity of the self-centered king. The profanity of the self-centered king. We're looking at Daniel chapter 11, verse, verse uh, 30 through to verse 34. In verse 30 of Daniel chapter 11, for the ships of cheating shall come against him. Therefore, he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the holy covenant. I'm sure you understand when he's talking about the holy land, the pleasant land, the glorious land, and the holy covenant. He's talking about the children of Israel. He will have wrath, anger, indignation, and he'll want to fight against the people of God that is children of Israel. So shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them, he'll have discussion with them, he'll have dialogue with them that forsake the holy covenant. What the Lord is saying here in the prophecy is that there'll be some backsliders, there'll be some apostates from the land of Israel. They will say, Well, this uh, anti this Antiochus, that is when he comes eventually, is uh, like a mighty person. Why are we going to be fighting and knocking our heads against the wall? And rather than resisting his evil, they will surrender and fall for his evil. And he'll have dialogue with them, he'll have understanding with them, he'll league with them, and he will have an agreement with them. And then it says in verse 31, an arm shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. In verse 32, and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. That is of those children of Israel, the Jews, when Antiochus came, and then he saw that some of them already deviated. They are shifted from their roots, and they are shifted from the holy covenant that God gave to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and to the children of Israel. He spotted them out, backsliders. They are like Judas as Carrot that the Pharisees and the Sadducees spotted out. And they knew that there's somebody in the midst of these 12 disciples that we can go through him. This one has deviated. This one is a backslider. Slider. This one loves money more than he loves his master, more than he loves Jesus Christ. And therefore they could go through him. The Antichrist will do the same thing at the end of time. He look at the children of Israel and he will see the people that are not faithful to the holy covenant. He will corrupt them with uh, whatever it is, flat trees and with his politics and policies and provision and prosperity and everything that he had to give. And it says such as do wicked leisure. He Against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But thank God, not everybody will fall. I said, not everybody will fall. Well, before I read on, if that will happen at the time of the Antichrist, at the time when things will be very difficult and very tough, and yet there are some tough-minded people, men of conviction, women of conviction, that will say, no matter the money, no matter the riches, no matter the wealth, no matter the politics, no matter the prosperity, and no matter whatever the Antichrist was willing to give, and they will say, we're going to stand, we will not compromise. If that will happen at that time, and not everybody will fall at this time now when the antichrist has not come will everybody fall 
I said, will everybody fall? I about you. You will not fall. If God can help the people at that terrible time, and they will stand for righteousness, I'm believing God for you. I'm believing God with you. You will not fall. You will stand. Because you know the power of your God. And because you know the strength of our Savior. Because you have the unction of the Holy Ghost within you. You have the promises of God. And because of that, no matter how many people are falling, you will stand and we will stand together in Jesus' name. And not only that, you know, as you think about the various denominations and churches and religious, uh, religious groups of the world, at near the time of the Antichrist coming, the Bible tells us that the word of God will not be very common. Many people will go back into false doctrine. Many people will go back into watered down preaching. Many people will go back into just this superficial uh, kind of watered down thing that will not hold any water, that will not bring righteousness to anybody's life. And you'll find this church has fallen away from the truth. That denomination has fallen away from the truth. That denomination has fallen away from the truth. And people will think, people will think, if all the major denominations are majority of the nations, they are falling away from the truth. They are thinking that it will soon come to our turn. We too will fall away from the truth. It will never come to our turn. Because if at the time of the Antichrist, at the time when it will manifest great, great, terrible wickedness and evil power, if there are some people that will still stand at this time now, this church, Deeper Life Bible Church, with you and with me here, and with us joining our hearts and hands together, standing for the truth of the word of God, content, honestly contending for the faith, once delivered unto the saints, as I look at you, I'm encouraged. And I know that we are standing together. I said we are standing together. You'll be praying with me. I'll be praying with you. And I believe that we're going to stand for this truth together in Jesus' name. It says, the love of many shall wax cold, but he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. I'm looking at people tonight who are going to stand till the end. We're going to stand for the truth till the end in Jesus' name. Come to verse 32. And such as do wickedly shall they, uh, against the covenant, shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God. Are those people around? The people that do know their God. Where are they? God bless you. You are there. The Lord will set a mark upon you. And you will never fall in Jesus' name. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. In verse 33, and they that understand among the people shall instruct many, will teach other people, will instruct many people. And the Lord will use us to teach and transform many other people around us in Jesus' name. Then it says, yet shall they fall by the sword and by the flame and by captivity and by spoil many days. Now when they shall fall, that is the Antichrist will fight against the people at that time. And many people will lose their lives. Don't be afraid, you'll not be here if you're a Christian. Because at the time of the rapture, which is before the great tribulation, we would have gone. I know I would have gone. We'll go together in Jesus' name. And it is after we have gone that the Antichrist will then be punishing the people and oppressing the people at the time of the great tribulation. Now, when they shall fall, they shall be holding with a little hell, but many shall cleave to them with flatteries. It's saying that those who are going to be caught in the web of that Antichrist, it will be because of the, of the, because of the flatteries of the Antichrist. These verses were read in Daniel, that is verses 30 to 34, they're looking prophetically at two personalities to Daniel. One was to be in the near future, and the other was to be in the far future. To Daniel, one was to rise to power before the first coming of Christ. I'm sure you know the name of that one now. What's the name? Antiochus Epiphany. And then the other will rise to power just before the second coming of Christ. That's the Antichrist. The first one will be the fulfillment, which is Antiochus, and the other, the final future fulfillment, which will be the Antichrist. The Jewish, Jewish history has put it on record that Antiochus had great indignation against the Holy Covenant, 
just like Vastati prophesied and did exactly as Daniel had prophesied. They shall pollute the sanctuary, verse 31, and they shall take away the daily sacrifice, verse 31, and they shall place the abomination that make it desolate, still in verse 31. As we have read the history of the children of Israel, the Jews, we have discovered exactly that was what happened. And Chilkos with his soldiers desecrated the Jewish temple. And then the sacrifice pigs, swine, so, on their altar. And they even banned them from circumcising their male children. And they also stopped daily, daily sacrifices. He actually imposed an idol statue in honor of the Olympian god Zeus into the temple. And that happened, we even have the date, December 15, 167 BC. That abomination of desolation caused the Jews to abandon the worship in their temple. That atrocity was only a preview of the abomination that would happen later under the final Antichrist. You know, Daniel has spoken about this before. Let's look at Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 27. Daniel said, that abomination is coming. And when that abomination comes, the people of Israel will not be able to worship in their temple anymore. Daniel chapter 9 verse 27, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to stop to cease, to come to an end. For the overspreading of the abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be purged upon the desolate. Look at chapter 12 of Daniel. Chapter 12 of Daniel. I'm reading there from verse 11. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away. You see what Daniel is saying? He's saying that the time is coming in the future. When the daily sacrifices of the children of Israel will be taken away. And it says from that time when the uh, sacrifices shall be taken away. And the abomination that maketh desolate set up. That is, the Antichrist, when he comes, he'll set up the abomination. And that abomination will make the temple desolate. You know what that means? When he sacrifices like pigs, which is an unclean animal, upon their altar. And then he sprinkles the altar with the blood of that pig. And then he also puts an idol in that temple. And he eventually, as the Antichrist, sitting upon, sitting on the throne. Over there in the temple saying, I am God. There's no other God. The children of Israel will not visit that temple anymore. It just be desolate. Nobody there anymore. That's what he's saying. And you know what Jesus Christ said? Jesus said that time is still coming in the future. That that time has not happened yet. Look at Matthew chapter 24 verse 15. Matthew chapter 24. We're looking at verse 15. When you therefore shall see which means it has not happened. He was telling his own disciples that the church will, uh, the church will still be on. And then the children of Israel of the future, when ye shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Let's, let's look at Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 4. And Paul is telling us the same thing that this is still future. It's still coming. The time of the Antichrist. The time of the great tribulation. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 4. Who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God. He'll be blaspheming. He'll be saying, there's no other God. I am God. He'll sit in the temple. He'll say, don't worship any other God. Come and worship me. And when the children of Israel, when you see that, they will abandon that temple. Because that is not the abomination of desolation. Who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God. Or that is worshipped. So that he as God seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. God. Revelation chapter 13. Revelation. We're looking at chapter 13 and we're looking at verse 5. Revelation chapter 13. We're looking at verse 5. 
And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. That's three and a half years. A time and times and half a time. Three and a half years he'll be blaspheming. And he'll have power to continue for that long. In verse 11. In verse 11 it says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. Uh, have, you, have you noticed that? Look at that verse 11 again. I, want, I don't want you to miss something there. I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth and he has two horns like what? A lamb. Gentle and meek like a lamb. Peaceful like a lamb. Just nice like a lamb. Sheepish like a lamb. But then he spake as what? As a dragon, he'll come out eventually in his true colors, in his true personality, and then he'll become very wicked. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him, and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth what? Tell me out loud. He doeth great wonders. And that's what will deceive some religious people. The people that are looking for miracles at all costs. And they do not know that even Satan can appear to be doing miracles. But slime wonder. And that will deceive them. But thank God you will not be deceived. He doeth great wonders so that he maketh the fire to come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceiveth them that dwell on, on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they shall make an image to the beast which at the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life Unto the image of the beast. Think about that. He had power to give what? Life to what? To the image of the beast. That is, he'll say, make a statue. And make that statue to look like the beast. The beast is representing the Antichrist. And he'll say, now look at that. That's just a statue. And you have seen that. And then he has the power to give the life unto that image. And when people see that, they say, and they say, have I not proved to you that I am God? Who else can give life to a statue? Who else can give life unto an image? And he'll say, that's why I sit in the temple. But some people, the Jewish people, who know that the Antichrist is coming, they say, we're not going to be deceived by that. Miracles will not deceive us, and miracles will not deceive you. And that's why it says, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast shall both speak and cause as many as will not worship the image of the beast that he shall be killed. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand and in their foreheads. I will not receive their mark. I said I will not receive their mark. Well, Praise God, you will not be here at that time. We will not be here at that time. But if we know we are not going to be here at that time, why are we studying this? I'll show you First John, First John chapter 2 verse 18. First John chapter 2. We're looking at verse 18. Little children, it is the last time. Little children, young people, believers. You know, John the Beloved was calling all the Christians, all the people, little children. You know why? He had known the Lord for many, many years. By this time he wrote uh, the epistle general of John. He was already about 96 years of age. And he knew the Lord Jesus as personal savior before the age of 20. He was virtually the youngest among all the disciples. And after spending 40, uh, 70 years with the Lord, all the other apostles had died. And he was the only living apostle at that time of the people that knew Jesus face to face. That's why he said little children. So don't you think that this talking to the children's church? Don't you think this talking to only our teenagers are used? This even talking to me, the pastor. And he's talking to you members and ministers of the church. Well, John, the beloved, we're all little children. Do you understand? So he's talking to us and says, little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that the Antichrist shall come, even now are there, tell me, many Antichrists, 
whereby we know that it is the last time. Even now, there are many antichrists, and they are deceptive. They look nice. They look gentle. They look. They look. They flatter you, and as they flatter you, and then they want to present their false doctrine to you. If you are not careful, you'll say this man is as gentle as our pastor, and it is even more gentle than our pastor because sometimes our pastor is sit down there, rise up there, and do this and do that. And this man doesn't do that. This one doesn't discipline anybody. Does not rebuke anybody. I think uh, you know, a pastor should learn from this gentle man. I will never learn from an antichrist. Praise the Lord. I'll follow Christ, but I'll not follow antichrist. And you will follow Christ. You will not follow antichrist in Jesus' name. There's the spirit of the antichrist. And I pray that even though that spirit is in the world right now, the Lord will deliver you, deliver me, deliver us from their spirit in Jesus' name. Look at First John chapter 4 verse 3. First John chapter 4 verse 3. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus is come in the flesh is not of God. This is that spirit of Antichrist. You see that? This is that spirit of Antichrist whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. Already now it is in the world. But can I show you something? Christ eventually will come. And Christ will destroy that Antichrist. Christ will overcome that Antichrist. We are on the winning side. We are with Christ. Light will overcome darkness. The truth will overcome error. And love will over, overcome the force of hatred. God's will will overcome man's will. Faith is going to overcome doubt. And hope will overcome despair. Stay on the right side. No matter what power and no matter what kind of strategy, no matter what ingenuity, the Antichrist or the people following the Antichrist, no matter what they manifest, stay on the side of Christ and you will win the day eventually in Jesus' name. We come to point number three, the perdition of the Satan-controlled king. The perdition of the Satan-controlled king. We're looking at it from Daniel chapter 11 verse 35. And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them to purge and to make them white even to the time of the end. We're now coming to the final period and it's just the period preceding the coming of Christ, preceding the time of the millennial reign when Christ will come to set up his 1,000 year reign. And it says even to the time of the end because it is yet for a time appointed. But this Antichrist will do terrible, terrible things just before that final time. In verse 30 it says, and the king shall do according to what? According to his will. And that's why my brothers and sisters and my children, sons and daughters, I've told you every time that we shouldn't ever think about just having our own way, doing my own will. Because that's the spirit of the Antichrist. Anybody that will say, I will have my way, I will go my own way, I will do my own thing. That's the spirit of the Antichrist. In fact, it tells us, look at Daniel chapter 8 and verse 4. Daniel chapter 8 verse 4. I, I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward and so that uh, so that no beast might stand before him neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand but he did according to what according to his will and became great it's something that you know many times makes me very happy and makes me rejoice when I hear testimonies about our people uh, sometimes, uh, you know, just uh, some time ago, a few weeks ago, I had a testimony because uh, uh, deeper life uh, people they went to a particular place. Were they were invited there, and when they got there, their comportment, their lifestyle, their honesty, and their righteousness it struck the people there. And then they went to tell the pastor of that uh, church where those uh, deeper life people came from. They said, "You know, your people they have made a mark in our midst. That they, they just act." like this and even though they spent a long time there yet it was very clear they were just for the will of God while the other people will say this is what we are going to do and this is what we are going to have these uh, gentle righteous children of God coming from our church here they represented Christ and they represented the church very well in that place 
when it comes to your turn to do that, you will be like that. That people will see that the gentle spirit of the Lamb of God is within us. And the lowly life of Christ is within every one of us. We will not do our will, we will do the will of God in Jesus' name. Let us look at this Daniel chapter 11 verse 3. Daniel 11 verse 3. And a mighty king shall stand up and that shall rule with great dominion and do according to his will. That is characteristic of the Antichrist. Antiochus Epiphany, he did according to his own will. Alexander the Great, he did according to his own will. Absalom, the son of, the son of David, he did according to his own will. And when the Antichrist comes to you, he will do according to his own will. They are all the same. They look alike. Absalom, Alexander, and Antiochus, Antichrist, all of them starting the same way, just their own will. And that's so why anytime you see something rising up in your heart, that you know the Lord is telling us teaching us in the word of God in doctrine of the about this is the way to go and we have our leaders emphasizing it and our leaders are teaching us that this is the will of God and the spirit of God is saying this is the way walk here therein if something is rising up inside your heart saying no I will not do that I'm going to have my own way say no I'm not going to allow this sin rising up in my heart that is the spirit of the antichrist you will subdue it you will crush it so that the Lord will make you like Christ and not like the Antichrist. You know what Christ said? I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. That will be your life. Look at verse 16. It says, but he, he that cometh against him shall do according to his own will. We're coming back now to Daniel chapter 11 verse 36. And a king shall do according to his will. And he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god. And he shall speak marvelous, blasphemous things against the God of gods. And shall prosper till the indignation shall be accomplished. For that 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 is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women. You know what that means? That it's likely to be like an homosexual. He'll be a man, but he will not have any desire for women. The natural desire of a man to a woman, of a husband to a wife, he will not have that desire. He'll just, you know, want to relate with men as if they were women. He'll not have the desire of women, nor regard any God for he shall magnify himself above all. And then it says, but in his estate shall be, shall he honor the God of forces, the God of hatred, and the God of, uh, of just fighting. And a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. And then it says, thus shall he do in the most strongholds with his, with his strange God, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory. And he shall shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for gain. He'll just, he'll just have all the power, the authority that he can bring to himself. And it says in verse 40, that at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him. There will be terrible wars, nation rising against nation, king rising against kings at that time. In verse 41, and he shall enter also into where? The glorious land. Where is the glorious land? What's that? Israel. That's the people of Israel. He shall enter also into the glorious land. And many countries shall be overthrown. But these shall escape out of his land. Even Edom and Moab and the chief of, uh, of the children of Amnon. He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries. And the land of Egypt shall not escape. But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and of, of silver and over all the precious things of Egypt. And the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his stairs. But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Shall trouble him. I, th I thought you would say amen. amen. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make a way to take to make away many. Then he says, and he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas in the glorious holy mountain. We're going to read this last part. It's so wonderful, so marvelous. One, two, three, go. Yet he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. Christ will reign forever and ever. 
see that Antichrist, we are ready to ready, he shall do according to his will, verse 36, he shall exalt and magnify himself above every God, verse 36, he shall speak marvelous, terrible, blasphemous things against the God of gods, in verse 36, he shall magnify himself above all that is called God, as verse 37, he shall honor the God of forces, verse 38, he will be opposed to God, he will be opposed to Christ, he will be opposed to everyone that is righteous, he will speak against God and fight against against the people of God, that is the children of Israel. He will resist Christ and the establishment of his kingdom of peace. He will use force and diabolical wickedness to try and to turn the whole world against the almighty God and against righteousness. He shall stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken. And he shall come to his end and none shall help him. In fact, that's what the New Testament says. Look at Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse eight. Second Thessalonians chapter two. We're looking at verse eight, and you will see that this Antichrist eventually he will be destroyed. Eventually, he will come to his end. Chapter two, reading from verse eight, and then shall that wicked be revealed. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. When he shall be destroyed, thank God, you are on the Lord's side. And all the people that are with him, they are also going to have face the judgment of God and they are going to be destroyed in Jesus' name. We are coming back to Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2, we're reading from verse 35. Daniel chapter 2, verse 35, it says, Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, the gold, broken in pieces together, and became like chaff of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. And the stone, this referring to Christ, the very Son of God, the cornerstone of the, of the final building of the church, and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. The kingdom of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, will fill the whole earth. In verse 44, and in the days of this king shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never, never, never be destroyed. That's why I said we are on the winning side. We have the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords, and the King of Kings. And because we belong to Him, we are going to reign with the Lord. It says, He'll set up the kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, the gold, the great God as uh, the great God of heaven has come as uh, made known unto the king what shall come to pass hereafter and the dream is certain and the interpretation is sure let's look at chapter 7 of daniel daniel chapter 7 i'm looking at verse 13 and verse 14 Daniel 7, we're looking at verse 13, and I, I saw in the night vision, and behold one, like the Son of Man, came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the ancient of days, and they brought him near before him, and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom, that all people, nations, and languages shall serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom with that which shall not be destroyed christ will reign over the whole earth but the question is at that time when jesus will reign over the whole earth where will you be and where will i be look at verse 20 look at verse 26 in verse 26 it says and judgment and the judgment shall sit and they shall take away his dominion that is dominion of the antichrist shall be taken away and consume and destroy each unto the end look at verse 27 this is for you this is for us and the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominion shall serve and obey him my question to you, my brother, my sister, would you be there at that time? Reign with Christ. I said, will you reign with Christ? 
if we are born again and we hold on to the very end. We don't allow temptation, trial, and trouble, persecution to sway us and make us turn back. And we live a day at a time. The grace of God is sufficient for you. And if you are getting tired, go back to the cross and go back to Calvary and say, Lord, I'm getting tired. Strengthen me again. God will strengthen you. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You will renew their st- your strength. You will run, you will not be weary. You will walk, you will not faint. And the hand of the Lord will be upon you. The anointing of the Lord will be upon your life. The grace of God will never fail in your life. Until Christ comes, you'll keep standing. And when he comes, he'll take you home. And when all these things were written about are happening in the world, you will not be here to taste any of those things. Christ will reign. You and I will reign with Christ in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. You will be there. I will be there to reign with Christ. And this time of the Antichrist, we will not be in the world at that time. Talk to the Lord in prayer. And say, Lord, I thank you. What a great privilege we have as the children of God. Born again. Cleansed with the blood of the Lamb. Washed in the blood of the Lamb. Tell the Lord, Lord, I want you to keep me. I want you to help me. I want you to strengthen me. Don't get tired. Don't get tired. Don't allow the devil to turn your mind and turn your eyes and turn your ears and turn your focus away from Christ. I don't allow any deceiver, any flatterer, any hypocrite to come and deceive you and make you fall away from your steadfastness. And you say, Lord, I know the spirit of the Antichrist is already walking in the world. But I'm not going to allow that to dissuade me, to persuade me, to turn me away from the Lord. I'm going to stand to the very end. The Lord will stand by you. The Lord will keep you. He will not let you fall. He keeps every child of God. He gives grace to every child of God. He loves every one of us, children of God. And he knows what is coming ahead. In the period of the great tribulation, he knows what's coming ahead. At a time when the Antichrist will reign. That's why he's teaching us and revealing and exposing all these things to us so that when that time shall come, we will not be here. He's getting us ready, getting us prepared. Saved people of God, sanctified people of God, spirit people of God. He's telling us, keep standing. Don't fall, don't fall, don't give up, don't give in to the adversary, to the devil, to the enemy. Don't get discouraged. Don't get discouraged. The Lord is on your side. And grace is available for you. And the strength of the Lord is available for you. And his power is available for you. Underneath you are the everlasting arms. And you know, whatever persecution you are facing now, you cannot compare the persecution of today with the terrible, painful, deadly persecution of that coming time, the time of the Antichrist. That's why you shouldn't allow anything of today, any challenge of today, any pressure of today, any persecution of today, any pain of today, of this day, to make you turn back. To make you give up, to make you backslide. That time of the Antichrist will be a terrible time. Because that Antichrist will be the vile person. Will be the son of perdition. Will be the one that opposes all righteousness and opposes the almighty God. It will be anti-everything that is for God. Anti-everything that is for righteousness. Anti-everything that is for sanctification. Anti-everything that is for righteousness. The persecution will be terrible at that time. But you are standing for the Lord. You are standing with the Lord. Don't allow deception. Don't allow deception. Be on the Lord's side. You can prevail. You will prevail. You're on the Lord's side. It's on your side too. He says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He says, I will hold your right hand. He says, underneath you are the everlasting arms. And he says, when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. You'll not be drowned. When you pass through the fire, I'll be with you. The flame will not burn you up. 
It says the Son of God, the presence of the Son of God will be with you. Like it was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You'll meet all your needs. You don't have to go to a false prophets to get anything, to have anything. You don't have to go to Judas Iscariot to share part of a statue piece of silver. All your needs are supplied by Christ. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You don't have to follow Demas who has forsaken the people of God and he has gone back into the world. Friendship of the world is enmity with God. Don't do that. Don't do that. Keep on standing. Keep on staying. Keep on abiding. If he abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what he will and shall be done unto you. The promises are sufficient for you. You have all that you need in Christ. There's no need to backslide and go into the world to have anything. Any gift from Satan, reject it. Any gift from the Antichrist, reject it. Abide in the Lord. Abide with the Lord. He'll never leave you. He will never leave you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. When you are weak, the Lord is with you. When you are sorrowful, the Lord is with you. He has sent the abiding comforter and he will be with you. He will see you through to the very end. My brother, my sister, it will not be long. My son, my daughter there, it will not be long. Christ will come. He will take us all home. And when the saints go marching in, I want to see you there. You will be there. I will be there.